We're gonna have a problem with this trailer that I don't hear anyone talk about ever. For sure, this is going to have problems being weather tight because of elevation change. I'm, I live at sea level, just to go locally up in the mountains where we live, it's going to have a difference in pressure from the inside of the box to the outside of the box. And as we go up peaks and down peaks, it is going to be a lung. It's gonna breathe dirt and stuff in through our weather, weather tight seals and then blow you know, air back out. And it's, I think on long trips, this is gonna turn into a maintenance nightmare. So what I wanna do is I wanna try to get ahead of it using stuff that I have laying around. So we're basically gonna make a stealth snorkel. And I know it sounds ridiculous to put a snorkel on a trailer, but I'm sure you can see where I'm coming from. If this is sucking air and pulling dirt and stuff in through these seals, it's gonna, over time, make it really dirty in there. And a little dirt, no big deal. A lot of dirt, big deal. I have a washable filter here. I have a chunk of exhaust here. And I think that we can make a snorkel top that'll fit just under a rooftop tent. This is by far my favorite part about these kinds of builds is finding stuff that I've laying around in the shop, finding some intake pieces, some exhaust pieces, and trying to fix a problem that a lot of people don't even know that you would have. Version 1.0 is installed. And as you can see, the top of the snorkel thing is below this bar and there's actually a little gap between uh, our rooftop tent and where this is gonna be. So we shouldn't hit or anything like that. There's little holes all around the inside here and they're way up in there. So I don't see any reason why water or anything would get in there. And it's not like this is an engine. It's not gonna be sucking a bunch of air through. There's just gonna be this little pressure change where it's just gonna be breathing in and out here and there. And I wanna give it the ability to do that in a clean way. So this is version 1.0. We might end up routing it over to an air box that I mount on the side or something, but at least we have something we can go test in the field. So now I got this giant list of things we have to do. And I think the next thing I wanna do is get this door mounted finally. To mount this kitchen door, we're going to use some tabs from Barnes Four Wheel Drive. These come with a 9 16th hole, we need to drill them out to a 3 quarter inch hole and then trim one side and they should fit just fine. I'm going to try to repurpose some hinges that we originally had for the kitchen door that now I'm not using for anything else. Hopefully with a little bit of trimming and creativity, we can make these work for our new application.
If you're unfamiliar with what these are, these are zip tie brackets. So we're gonna break off these one at a time. We're gonna tack weld them to our main beam and then whenever we do the wiring in the future, we're gonna have a solid connection point for our main wire harness. We're getting to a point in this project where I need to decide what is the best order to go about the rest of this. And I also am limited on material. Some of this stuff is in the mail so I can finish like one thing here or there. Like I didn't order enough of these uh, weld, these weld on barn zip tie mounts. I need to order some more of those. There's a couple small details like that. Our sprayer, I'd love to mount our sprayer for our plumbing, but I don't have the sprayer here yet. So what I think I'm gonna do is I wanna mount a bunch of our lights. I wanna do some lights on some of the corners. So it'd be nice to get all those holes and everything drilled now before we start to paint and finish the rest of this. And then I wanna put all of our accessories on it, our doors on it, make sure that everything fits the way it should before we start to paint stuff. And then I think I'm going to finish our kitchen table 100% and figure out how to suspend it. to wrap this trailer in a bright orange wrap in conjunction with a bunch of textured truck bed coating. And for that reason, I ordered these Max Tracks in a gray color so that they pop against the orange surface. I wanted to try and use them in conjunction with the orange Max Tracks that I already have, but for some reason they didn't nest very well together. So I'll just run these gray Max Tracks for now. We are clearly prepping everything for paint and you want to check fitment and this is exactly why right here. This is off quite a bit and it's from when I welded this last bar in here, it clearly distorted the steel just a little bit. And so we need to figure out a way to stretch that back out and make it true so that it can fit back on there. I'm thinking we're gonna take a bottlenose jack and we will try to stretch this out just a little bit. I'll pull some measurements and we'll try to stretch it by like, I don't know, 3 16 of an inch first, see if it fits. And if we need to go more, we can. But I've got this uh, pneumatic jack that's in my Tacoma. Well, it's in whichever rig I'm gonna be wheeling in on any given weekend. And I think this could work, but We'll see, I haven't uh, done a technique like this before. Now 
This video was a big one. We needed to get a ton of test fitment done. Otherwise, this could come back to bite us so hard in the future if we don't make sure that all this stuff fits before we paint. And we had to tweak some things here and there, but everything is on it, everything fits. So hopefully we can pull everything back off, we can paint it, we can do our wrap, we can do all that work. And then whenever we go to rebolt all this stuff back on, it just bolts right up and we don't have to worry about messing up any of the paint or our, our wrap or any of that kind of thing. Now, uh, next video, we have to get to this trim finally. I've got 40 feet of aluminum trim uh, well, aluminum angle that we're going to turn into trim that's going to cover all these edges. So once we paint it, once we wrap it, we're going to have a nice, it's going to be painted black, nice black aluminum trim that'll go around all these corners. Because if you take the time and you really work these corners to make them super pretty, all it takes is one branch to just destroy them and then you've got rust. So my idea was Aluminum is light. This is going to act as armor and even if it pull, you know, branches and stuff are going to be taking the black paint off, it's going to look a lot better not being rusty. So that's kind of my that, that's my idea. To answer some of your questions, I'm sure people are going to be wondering about taillights. I plan on doing some taillights up here. I might even build some little housings to add some taillights on the bumper. Not quite sure yet. Um, oh, this guy. I had asked you a couple weeks ago what you thought I should do to keep the table up. So what I decided after reading all the comments, the most common comment was to go old school, like the tailgate straps on that Jeep over there and have basically a piece of steel, a piece of steel or aluminum, whatever, and a pivot point. With kids, I'm concerned about that. I don't, I don't want somebody to get their finger chopped off um, or my, probably not chopped off, right? Real world, kid gets their finger stuck in there. It gives them a cut and then they're having to deal with that the whole time you're on your trip. I just don't want to deal with any of that. So what we did is we're going to put this, we have this bump stop in the middle that's going to help support the middle. Um, in order to keep this light, I've built out a lightweight material and it's flimsy. So what I want to do is I'm going to use some uh, nitrogen charged struts. I was planning on using these, but they don't have even close to enough throw. So I'm gonna have to order some longer ones. I had a bunch of you suggest that and it's a really good idea. So we're gonna do nitrogen charged struts on the outside and then the inside will be supported by this. And then I added another bump stop in the middle here. So it basically helps keep everything nice and straight once you latch it up. Huge thanks to Seymour for sending us paint to paint this project. This is gonna require a lot of paint. What I used on the underside was this stuff right here, four in one. We did our first coat. There's probably gonna be three or four coats. I wanna really make sure that the underside of this trailer is coated well. So we did our first coat now, let it cure for 48 hours and then add the other coat and cure for 48 hours and just slowly work our way all the way around the trailer. And thank you to Barnes Four Wheel Drive for sending all the brackets and tabs. It speeds these projects up a lot. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you on the next one. <laughs>